Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now we start off today's show with some inspiration. In the words of Martin Luther King Jr., if a man is called to sweep streets, he should sweep so well as Beethoven did with music, or as Michelangelo painted, or even as Shakespeare composed poetry. He should sweep the streets so well that the host of heaven and earth will pause and say, here lived a man who was a great street sweeper. Now, today we're highlighting the story of a man who refuses to allow his physical challenge come between him and his daily bread. He's a sweeper and he sweeps streets, but this time around of pedestrian bridges. Enjoy this report and we hope that this will inspire you to do better and to not allow anything come in between you and that vision of yours. That time I'm very young because I'm stay with one of my uncle. You know, as that children that time, I like to play football. From I came back from school, I, from there I go and play football. Then my uncle, she told me before I went to work to tell me to wash plate and cloth. True, I've not washed the plate and the cloth. From there I go and play football. From there I go and play football. Before he came back for work, I didn't know say she came back. As I reached home like this, she just told me, say, from where I'm coming from, I said, I'll go and play football. Say, ah, the work she told me to do, I'm not doing it. I said, I will do it. From there, it started to beat me, to flog me. People we are living together, they are labor, they are begging to leave me, say, I will do it. She didn't hear, she locked up to beat me. From there, people are sleeping, just uh, this uh, rope, uh, throwing rope, just using throwing rope to tie my hand at my back and my leg together. Because that time, the house we are living is not, is decking house. From there, just carry me to that decking house. Go and put me there. She tightened my mouth and my legs. I can't shout, I can't. For almost three days, I can't eat because the the type of the rope she used to tie my hand, the blood is flowing to come my hand. It can't come there. She all here is swell up. My hand is just I don't I can't explain very well because that time because at myself I want to I want to die because they just rushed me to General Hospital at Ikeja. From there, the doctor called my family, said that she go and call my family, come. My mom just come and say, who do this little young boy like this? My mommy told the doctor, say, it's in one of her uncle. Say, I say the boy is stiff, they are doing anything like this. They say, no. Why? I say, because of to washing plate, to wash clothes, that is why. Ah. From there, the doctor say, they want to do operate this hand <clears throat> my daddy will sign because they will operate the hand say they will not operate the hand the, uh, they, will, they will lose me ah, my daddy just think okay well my daddy just for they just lose hope say okay they go, may they, they go and do it the uh, the next three days i don't know anything because they give me just so i just sleep the three days I just wake up, I just look my hand, I bandit my hand. I didn't know same they are cutting my hand too. Ah, the day they want to open the bandage of my hand. I just see, see I don't have hand. From there I'm crying. I told my mommy, my mommy too is crying. Since that time my uncle ran away. We didn't know the place he ran away. All my junior brother that are looking for that, my uncle, say they will do it bad too. They will cut in two hand and two leg. They will in two we know as you should be for a body. But since that time, I'm not to take my two eyes to see him right now. Because the time I sent somebody to me, 
to come and meet me, to beg me, one of my friends. That one came to, to Anthony because people had known me there. From there, that in friend to come and meet me there. Say, ah, Kunle, forgive your uncle. Say, ah, forgive him. You should not say the thing will happen like this. I say, ah, I'm not forgiving you. That time I'm very young. I say, I'm not forgiving you because she disturbing my destiny. Because it's the one devil used to me to disturb my own destiny because I'm not happy. To just forgive him like that, I said, no. She go. I'm not answering your friend. Later on, like most two years again, I go and bring one pastor. That one came there again. That one talked to me. That pastor talked to me. But that two years later, I have a, this young boy that time. He's going like one year and a half. That's my firstborn that time. That pastor told me, say, see, it's not my power. God don't give you a charge. Just forgive him. God will do good things in my life. Say, I shall forgive him. Say, I forgive him. God will bless me more. Because I put it in my own mind. God will not open blessing for me. Say, well, okay. The pastor talked to me. I say, well, I forgive him. But I talked to the pastor. I want to say that my uncle. He say she will came. I said, I want to see her, let me to see. Ah. They say she will came. Since that time, I'm not saying, well, I forgive him. Till now I'm talking, I'm not seeing that my uncle. She running from me. Every time he's hearing say, my wife born for me, she will send person come. Ah. I will say, ah. See, my uncle sent, is the one saying, because that time he ran to Ghana. Run to Ghana because that time, that doctor is treating me. She, she called police. She called police at that hospital at that time. And one of her friends that rushed me to that hospital is the one telling that my uncle say, you should run away, Lou. Because that doctor is calling police. From there, she run away. At that time, no see her. Till now, I'm talking. I'm not seeing my too high to see that my uncle. But all the things I'm hearing now is because she married wife, all this you married two wife, the wife had died. Instead, you don't you know getting you know get about your own life too. I say, well, I forgive him, but I pray to God, God will do better for me. Because I believe in God, God will do because I have a children now. My own children I'm facing, I want to make my children to, to go to school, because then go to school, that the one that can fight for me, they can help me because I grow now, I can't have power to work. It's them that will help me to feed me. That's why I'm fighting for them to, to go to school. They can no book, they can be somebody tomorrow. That's why I'm, I'm struggling every time today, because the place I'm living, very far. I will sleep, maybe sometime I'll reach home like 10 30, sometime 11 o'clock. I will wake up around 3 30, 3 40, before I reach Lagos, maybe 7 o'clock. Every day by day. Only Saturday and Sunday I will take rest in my, in my house. Lagos State, then came with me there. They appreciate the work I'm doing. Fashola, that time, the, the former governor, she helped she help us, like disabled like this. 15, we are be 15, that give us a salary. Cause when we are working a bridge like that, that give us 10,000 a month. But that time we, somebody come in, she stopped everything. We are not seeing the morning again. People that are working on, around that place, I come and ask me, say, yeah, they're not giving money. I say, no. 
some people a month they will came uh, i would tell them say my children that will not go to school anything anybody have they will donate for me some people will bring two thousand some people will bring one thousand some people will bring any amount they have they will bring to me give to me i will join it together to go and pay my children's school fees because anything anybody want to talk to me about my family first, I will let them to help me. They want to help me. I will tell them I my part my family because because they be my future. That's why I want to they can help me about them. Because it's then I'm struggling for to be a somebody. Because I don't go to school but I want to make my family to be to go to school. Then go to school, I grow now, they can pay somebody tomorrow, they can feed me, that's why. <laughs> I have encountered a lot of challenges. My grandmother raised me, and while I was growing up with my grandmother, I used to hawk food because my grandmother was a food vendor. Basically, the places where he plays football is where I also hawk food, and that was where we met. When he wanted to toast me, he sent my friend to me, but I didn't know he had a condition with his hands. He doesn't have fingers because he is always putting his hands inside his pockets. After my friend has spoken to me, which I accepted. So whenever we go out on dates and we are gisting, he will not bring out his hands from his pocket. Until one day, we were inside a bus and he was hiding while eating. When I looked closely, lo and behold, he didn't have a palm or fingers. So I told him, there is no point hiding your condition from me, and this condition cannot stop me from marrying you. My parents even asked me if I'm comfortable with his conditions. And I told them, yes, I am okay with his conditions, and I love him for who he is. It's true, marriages have challenges. We have our own marital challenges as well. There are times we quarrel a lot and we don't even invite third party into our marital issues because we always find a way to resolve it. There are days when he returns from work and he says there's no money. Well, we bless God for that day and still live as one happy family. We are pleading to the government and the general public to help us so that our children can go to school and acquire better education and also help establish my husband and I. There is nothing for us to eat and we don't want our children to become wayward or join bad gangs in the streets. That is why we are using this medium to appeal to the government and the general public to help us by establishing us with a business and funds for our children to go to school. The bridge is sweeping, which government usually pay him before now. But over three years now, the government has stopped paying him. But he's still doing the job like that. Hmm. <laughs> So far, it's God's favor and little arms from people that he has been bringing for us to feed with, if not for the fact that he is very sick now. By this time, he would have been at the workplace, sweeping the bridge. Our 16 years old son that wants to write Wayek as well, we cannot afford to feed how much more money for his Wayek exam. His five years old brother that needs to start school. No money. The government should please help us so that our children can have a better education and become someone great in life. A help at least that can sustain us till our old age. Even in our old age, we will not be a liability. I also make sales from my own small-scale business in order to sustain the family. If my husband stops bringing money home, I don't want a situation whereby money will separate us. Growing up as a child, I didn't know my biological mother, and I wouldn't like such to happen to my own children. 
because lots of men are asking me out, saying they will take care of me if only I will marry them. But I don't want to destroy my family. Once again, we are asking for help from the government. But there's no money. I'm supposed to do my son work last year, but there's no money. We cannot have, Mr. Adeko did not have enough money to send us to school so that we will start at home. But I want to ask for help from the, from the government and people so that they should help us. To enjoy more of this, our Ogonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.